What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today we're going to be revisiting the Precious Scar Exotic as Season 15 has arrived alongside some new buffs introduced. If you can recall, back when the Exotic was first introduced, I did a build based around the idea of supporting my team while alive or dead. And this was to get the Exotic to have a much wider role than what it originally was designed. The Exotic had one issue and that was to activate it, it would require you or a team member to die and thus you can gain the overshield and healing factors from the exotic. This is great if you plan to play with new players who are prone to dying a lot or playing content where difficulty is quite high, but many players will just opt in to play in a safer playstyle to which the exotic will lose its function. Come as of now, this has all but changed for the exotic. Now the exotic comes with a secondary effect that will allow users to produce a healing property every time they get a kill. This small but noticeable buff allows the exotic to have a much more active role compared to its past form and does provide a better role in general for whatever content you have in mind. So with that, I have revisited the past build we did and updated it so it now incorporates the new buff and some new additional features as well. Now, if you ever wanted to truly be a central character for your team, this build will show you how to flawlessly achieve it. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using Code of the Protector for its all out defensive support role in game and this, alongside Code of the Seedbreaker, is where I find the exotic to really shine the most out of everything offered. The main feature of Pleasure Scars in the past was to provide you and your team a 10 second overshield that would allow you to soak up as much damage as possible and prevent you from dying a second time round. If you died again, you can just re-trigger the exotic again as many times as you like. As it relied on deaths to be active, this feature hampered what type of playstyle a user could use to get the most out of it. Since builds based around death and revival in game like Destiny, where death can be easily avoided, don't provide as much option to the player compared to most other RPG related games. As of now though, the exotic has a secondary feature. A final blows from weapons with damage type matching your subclass energy create a burst of healing around you. This burst of healing will benefit you and anyone near you when it's most active as it kickstarts your healing straight away, it's sort of like a quick adrenaline boost. This gave me the idea that combining this with Code of the Protector will offer a lot more bang to the user as we can utilize perks such as Defensive Strike for a quick overshield for all, increasing their protection further as we gain kills with our weaponry. Alongside the reviving of our team members feature as well, all of our team will have an increased level of protection as long as they are near us and thus become the beacon of hope. However, as the exotic works with other subclass as well, we could combine it with the code the Siegebreaker for its empowering effects to user, but also we could add in Warmind Cells and Elemental Worlds to the mix so that our team can benefit even more when the effects from our exotic aren't directly benefiting them straight away. We have so much more options now made available when using the exotic and I can see it being picked up by those who want to actively support through passive means. For weapons, your energy, heavy or primary will need to correspond with the subclass being used so we can gain the pressure scars effects then and then. How you do this is down to how effective you want to support your team and whether you want to play a close range role or a long distance one. If we take my primary example, I've opted into using the ignition code with blinding grenades, ambitious assassin and danger zone, as this can help with suppressing enemies movements and allow me, my team to easily get through whatever content we are in. As blinding grenades have such a profound effect on minor to major enemies, this perk suits the fit of a support weapon when combined with the build. We do also have to take in mind that grenade launchers have good impact damage, so they'll be very effective against bosses to mini bosses and we can reapply the blinding effect on all targets as much as we like. So if we are surrounded and my team needs help ASAP, I can rely on this weapon with ease. Of course, we can opt into using weapons with osmosis instead if you feel like blinding targets isn't necessary as we can trigger the exotic healing factor via that method instead. The Traveler's Chosen Sidearm has a new catalyst introduced this season that offers both full auto and osmosis and this exotic with Pusser Scars can definitely make some interesting interactions when paired. For secondary, I'm using the Graviton Lance Exotic as I found it to have the best synergy when combined with Pressure Scars and triggering its effects. Last time, I opted into using the Imperial Needle as it was both void and very effective at taking enemies out within a few shots. As the season mods and gears have changed, I needed a weapon that would provide good DPS against single targets, 
but also grant me the ability to always have the healing feature from Pressure Scars to kick in after firing. This is where Graviton Lance and his perk Cosmology comes into play. You see, when we activate the Cosmology perk, Void Projectiles will spawn and chase down any enemy nearby it, and either damage them or kill them, which will cause a chain reaction to spread its effects. This one feature against a group of minor enemies will allow me to not only mop up groups with one burst, but it will automatically count as triggering the healing feature from Pressure Scars. This pretty much means that we can become a walking healing rift if the timing of the explosion is right. If however you don't want to use an exotic for the slot, any void weapon with Dragonfly will suffice. For example, Royal Chase, Bottom Dollar and Vault Safe are good alternatives. For Heavy I've chosen to use the Shattered Cypher Heavy Machine Gun with Heating Up and Vampage and this here is to help against the bigger enemies who require more indirect and harder hitting damage. Fantastic weapon to have for its high DPS and great for mowing enemies down in a hell of bullets, the Shattered Cypher is a must have for this build when all else fails. Your heavy slot is more down to what you feel fits best for the build so opting in to using a Void Rocket Launcher or Grenade Launcher are great alternatives as well. Just make sure you add in the Elemental Armors mod for an increased chance to make wells. For the stats, we are focusing as much effort into the Strength, Discipline and Intellect area as these will provide the ability energy we need to sustain ours and our team's survival. As the build uses a lot of energy to get about and this requires us to use a weapon that corresponds with our subclass, we will be leaning heavily into the Elemental Arm mods as it makes the most sense doing so. Although my strength stat looks low compared to everything else made available, I plan to utilize the elemental wells and heavy handed mods to fully keep the ability afloat. At 30, we aren't getting much for passive regeneration, and if I didn't have the mods to back it up, then there will be a lot more sacrifices to be made to keep this stat going up. However, elemental well and child with light mods will be key for supporting this area. Heavy handed will provide half my melee energy back if I'm charged with light, and with two stacks means I can generally get my full melee back from just using my charged melees. We also have the 1 2 finisher as backup if we aren't able to trigger heavy handed, which will grant us a full charge back with the cost of 1 6th of our super. We then lastly have the melee well maker mod, which is new and provides the user a elemental well upon charged melee final blows. As you can see, Melee here is covered in a way that it will be active the moment you need it, rather than waiting for it to passively regenerate. For Discipline, I've aimed for 60 to 80 base stat, and Intellect 50 to 60 base stat. Because we have a lot of room available, both of these stats can be moulded into however much amount you need to fully support the build, as you can never go too much. I plan to use these suppression grenades for my subclass to suppress enemies as much as I can, the same way I plan to use my grenade launcher. With this being the case, mods such as Distribution and Elemental Ordnance will be key for providing a super fast regeneration speed for this area once used and depleted. The Ordnance mod now also links back into my super, as I don't have any mods specifically being used to improve this area further, we can add in mods like Ashes to Assets and Fond of Wisdom to further enhance it if need be. The main thing to take away is that elemental wells will be constantly active from weapon usage via elemental armaments to grenades usage via elemental ordnance. No matter what you do in game, your abilities will always be filled as long as you play your cards right. Now as we have covered the main topics of setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will affect the build. For head we have resilience, machine gun and refinder and taking charge mod. Arm we have my resilience, Unstoppable Pulse Rifle and Heavy Handed mod, Chest with Discipline, Concussive Damage Times 2 and Elemental Orders mod, Leg we have Discipline, Machine Gun Scavenger and Elemental Armaments mod, Mark with Minor Discipline, Distribution, 1 2 Finisher and Melee Wellmaker mod. So, as of last time, here is what I've managed to sum up with playing and creating the build and what change were deemed necessary this time round. The Exotic's nature in the past required deaths for it to be at most active for us to play into its large benefits for a team or else it stayed obsolete. The idea behind it was good for ending content that is challenging but not impossible to do such as Gambit, Nightfall or even Grandmasters. Those examples are the best areas I have found the Exotic to succeed in the most as it covers the core design of the Exotic in general. 
Because of the strictness of the build, we had to build around the exotic and its passive nature, so that when the time comes to activating it, we can also activate a wide number of other abilities for more survival at hand, such as an extra O shield, health regeneration, etc. Now, however, we can play a more active role thanks to the small buff provided to Precious Scars. We are still getting an extra overshield from our charge melee, which will help our team from section to section soak up extra damage that could have been made lethal without it, and with that also come with a melee damage boost, health regeneration, and longer lasting overshield boost from Valiant Force, and turn the tide subtree perk. But now, while those are active, we can also proc a healing field around us every time we get a kill with our void weaponry, which will surpass any sort of damage coming our way, and allow you to become a walking support tank for whatever content you're in. We also will be heavily creating elemental wells as we go, so this will be greatly benefiting our team whether they have the same subclass as us or not. No more needing to rely on the death revival feature to get the most out of the exotic. No more needing to rely on the death revival feature to get the most out of the exotic. Now we can play a pivotal role without needing to feel as a anchor to our team. Last time, this was as far as the build could go with its design, as the exotic pearl was too risky to use in most activities, and you don't want to be dying a lot just to activate something so small and forgettable. However, now we can play the build in the sense that we will be constantly reinforcing our team members for whatever content you end up in, which can go a long way if you plan to play in a raid for example, where survival and limited revivals will be constantly on your mind. I can't see this build playing much of a role in Grandmasters, as the extra overshield game by melee is too risky of a playstyle for that content, but anything else will be fine as long as you head in prepared. Overall, the buff to Precious Scars is a welcoming addition as I can use it wherever I like, and although it may not be noticeable for some, the effects you can give with the right build is noticeable in the long run. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.